Relatives of an Indian man who died in Russia are petitioning the government to bring his body back to his village, according to Reuters. His family says the individual was killed after being forced to fight in the war in Ukraine. Ravi Moon, 21, wasn't the first victim of such a practice. Earlier, several men contacted India's foreign ministry saying they were duped into traveling to Russia where they were promised jobs or education. But upon arrival to the country, they were forcibly recruited into the Russian military. Ravi Moon was also contacted by an agent who promised him a job. His relatives lost contact with him in May 2024 and later found out about his death. Families of forcibly recruited individuals appealed to the diplomatic facilities with a request to free the men. Russia promised New Delhi that Indians duped into joining its army would be discharged. A few days later, the Indian embassy in Moscow informed Moan's relatives of his death without elaborating on the circumstances under which he died. Previously, the AFP reported that Russia's recruitment drive is part of a broader global effort by Russia to bolster its forces, in addition to a significant domestic campaign. Moscow is believed to have recruited thousands of foreign fighters, including hundreds from Nepal, India's economically challenged neighbor, Cuba, Serbia and Central Asian countries. India is a long-standing ally of Russia, has refrained from explicitly condemning the invasion of Ukraine. More than two years since Russia's war started, tens of thousands of its soldiers have been killed in Ukraine. India's foreign ministry last week said that the government was still working with Russian authorities to repatriate around 50 Indians fighting alongside the Russian army. According to Indian media reports, four other Indian soldiers have died so far this year. Indian authorities have apprehended several people accused of trafficking citizens of the country to fight for the Russian army. The people have opted to travel to Russia for fighting against Ukraine as the unemployment remains high in India and huge numbers seek work abroad each year. Iranian leadership has vowed to avenge the killing of Hamas political leader in Tehran. Ismail Haniyeh was killed by an airstrike in Tehran on Wednesday morning. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei announced today that because the attack took place in Tehran, we consider his revenge as our duty. Iran's newly elected moderate president Masoud Pazeshkian who was sworn in on Tuesday, also pledged to avenge the attack in Iran's soil. Pazeshkian said his country would defend its territorial integrity and honor, and make the terrorist occupiers regret their cowardly action. Ismail Haniyeh had been a VP guest of Pazeshkian's inauguration ceremony and was killed by an airstrike at a residence in Tehran. His funeral will be held in Tehran tomorrow, according to Hamas sources. A senior Hamas official described Haniyeh's killing as a cowardly act that will not go unpunished. 
Mediators Qatar and Egypt warned it would set back talks on a ceasefire and a deal to release hostages held in Gaza. The killing of Haniyeh came only hours after Israel said it had killed a top Hezbollah commander in Beirut. Although, Iran and Hamas have attributed the attack to Israel, the Israeli government has refused to comment on the Hamas leader's death. It should be noted that Israel vowed to kill all Hamas leaders after the October 7 attacks. Speaking after the assassinations, the U.S. Defense Secretary, Lloyd Austin, said the Biden administration was doing things to take the temperature down, but would come to Israel's defense if it were attacked.